Hey everybody, this is Dean and welcome to Photo Blue. Today I thought I'd show you how you can take one of your own photographs uh, to use to generate an AI image using Stable Diffusion. Now I'm using the NMKD Stable Diffusion GUI uh, for this and I have another video of how to install this uh, GUI which also installs Stable Diffusion on your local Windows machine. So to start out with, um, what we're going to do is we're going to go up here where it says load image. And I'm going to use this image right here and let's take a look at it. This is the image right here. It's an iPhone image. I think it's a four by three aspect ratio. If we go back to here, down here with resolution width and height, this is something that you have to uh, mess with. It depends on your graphics card, how far you can go and everything. Uh, this particular uh, resolution works for me. It's 960 by 640. And what I also did is um, up here, uh, I actually uh, set, uh, here it is under post-processing, I set four times upscaling, uh, so it actually upscales it from there four times. Uh, so so uh, that's in the post processing though. So the initial image is going to be 960 by 640, but it will will increase it will increase it uh, using that setting. Uh, I'm going to generate five images at a time. You can generate more. The more images you have, the more you have to select from. Uh, but for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to go uh, five at a time right now. So we'll do one after the other. Uh, image strength influence 0.45 is uh, is pretty good. It's kind of in the middle. 0 0.95 is uh, is more towards the image and. Uh, if you get it down towards zero, it's more, uh, it's more what the AI generates. Um, there's a lot of things you can mess with it with this. I suggest only messing with maybe one variable at a time to see how it affects it. And I'm going to show you a few of the variables here. Uh, we're not trying to make a perfect image now. We just want to see how some of this stuff works. So let's go uh, here, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put landscape here because we need to put something here, and this is a landscape. And so I'm not going to add anything at all to this. I'm going to just generate right here what it will do with a landscape set on this minimum, m m middle uh, strength uh, uh, influence. So let's generate it. All right, so it's finished the uh, images right now and so let's take a look at what it did this is the original image once again and now let's look at some of the images it created from this uh, if we go back let's go back to the original image a second notice the sky this tree line here these areas to the right and left of this um, boardwalk and the boardwalk itself and so those are the things that are going to change predominantly. So right here, you, you see the water's changed, the sky's changed, and this background's changed some. The same here, there's like a, a hill and a field now up here. Uh, and it's changing some, some minor things right now. Let's put this plan in here. Uh, Once again, it, it's changed it and altered it slightly. This this uh, path has changed here as well. So we'll just go through these real quick. So it's it's altered some minor things here. Now I'm not putting any descriptor in here. Like uh, we could put a descriptor like photorealistic or photo real or uh, ultra real to try to make it more like a photograph and some of some of these have aspects that look more like paintings but we're not going to really worry about that now that's something you can experiment with I just want to give you a general idea of how this works so we're going to go back up here and what we're going to do is so it's on 
four point uh, 0.45. If we go more this this way, it's going to change less things. Uh, so it's going to look more like a photograph and just alter more minor things. Uh, but what, what we're going to do is we're going to go over, all the way over here to the lowest setting, which is 0 0.05. And uh, so it's going to look at the photograph and it's going to just kind of more or less do its own thing in this case. So let's see what it does now when we hit generate. All right, so let's take a look at what it's done now. So once again, this is the original photograph right here. And so what we've done is we've gone here and we've said uh, uh, weaken the influence of the image. So kind of do your own thing, but look at the the um, photograph and uh, you know try to create something based in some way on it. Uh, so if we go here and we start to look, you'll see it's totally different, really. It's, it's, it's painting-like, but it does have certain aspects, like, for instance, the sky and the ground occupy kind of a similar composition and a similar amount of the space. If we go over here, it's the same thing. And if you look at this right here and we go back, notice this, this part of the tree line that kind of is bigger than the rest of the tree line. It's higher and thicker looking. So if we go back here, you can see those elements are within that, and this has become a hill here. This is actually pretty unusual one right here. Um, and then we have this. So it's, it's, it's done some landscapes kind of based off of the composition screen, but it's more like a painting in this case. But we, we didn't put any keywords in to try to stop it from being a painting. So if we go if we go back to uh, here, so one thing we could do is we could uh, go down here to prompt guidance. If we go to the left, it uses less of the prompt guidance. If we go to the right, it uses more. So I, th I think it goes up to 25. Uh, nine tends to be a, a pretty good balancer. That's what I would start on. Uh, that's what I usually e use or start on. If you go down here more, it's going to kind of not pay as much attention to the prompt, but it will pay attention to the input and basically what it wants to create, I guess. Uh, so that's one thing to consider. Generation steps right here. 50 is a good area to experiment on. I think somewhere between uh, I think 20 and 60 are supposed to be a good range that you can use uh, but you can go higher but the higher you go it, it gets more detail as you go up higher but beyond 50 or 60 I don't think it, it changes as much as you go up higher on so and it's slower the higher up it is so 50 tends to be a good um, medium right there on that uh, so um, we could mess with this as far as um, uh, uh, how much it pays attention to the prompt. But another way to do that is to use uh, parentheses. Uh, you can actually use um, parentheses, which will emphasize it or, 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 and make it more impactful. Or you can use curly braces, which will kind of de-emphasize it and make it less impactful. And the other thing is you can use... Uh, uh, square brackets to exclude certain things from an image. So like if you didn't want any trees, you could put trees within uh, square brackets and it would try to remove the trees or not put those in as well. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go up here to uh, landscape and we're going to go uh, we're going to go uh, at sunset and golden hour. And I'm going to put that in parentheses to try to emphasize it a little bit there. And I'm going to go in mountains in the background. And see if it will add mountains into the background for us as well. So now we're going to generate using this uh, prompt. All right, it's finished generating the images, but I actually made a mistake. But I'm keeping the mistake in to show you uh, how things uh, can work sometimes. Uh, I, I meant to move the strength to back to uh, 
0.45 and I did not. And so it generated these images and let's, let's, uh, go back. Now I, I put in these, these extra words originally it was just landscape. And now I have at sunset with golden hour and mountains in the background. And if we go back, this, this is kind of what it was generating with that level where, where the uh, image didn't affect it as much. And so we got things like this, right? Well, now by just putting some words into the prompt, we, we get this picture, which is really actually very nice. Uh, and uh, it doesn't look like the original picture, but once again, it's kind of uh, keeping the same amount of sky and ground and similar composition. It's added mountains in the background here. And here we go again with another image. And uh, these are really actually pretty beautiful images right here that it created. And this is the original image once again. So this is the variation we got. We've got from going from here to here and this is the original uh, so that's to give you an, an idea there so now what we're going to do is we're going to go back and do what I intended to do which is pull this back up to 0.45 which is in the middle of the influence range so so uh, uh, let's see what it does now when we generate something all right, so uh, it's finished now, and so the uh, image influence is up higher now, and so let's look at what it produced with this. So we've got like a sunset here. This is kind of looking more like a mountain than just trees right here, but it's not really a mountain per se. A lot of this stuff is random, so the more images you generate, right now we're just generating five images, but a lot of times I do like 20 or 30 images at a time uh, and just you know let the thing run and come back and then I pick the best image from those 20 or 30 images and sometimes I run another 20 or 30 uh, just to see what I get the variations I get so here's another one right here and we've got more of a sunset in this one and here now we're really beginning to get mountains uh, this is beginning to look a little more painting like here uh, and so is this one right here and there's some mountains in the background there as well some mountains there you see the path is changing different things are, are changing in it and this is the original once again so now I'm going to do one final thing we're going to take this exact prompt and these exact settings from this last set and I'm going to change the image and so we're going to go in and we're going to pick a different image right here. And the image we're going to use is this image now. So we're going to see with the exact same prompt and settings what it does to this image. Because the image itself will have an effect uh, on uh, even if you use the same settings and everything. So let's go ahead and generate that now. All right, here's a final example using the same prompt but a different photograph. So let's go back here. This is the photograph we've used this time. And we can go and we can see uh, it's made at sunset, golden hour. There's a mountain in the background here. And we have several examples of this. So you can see how um, the, the photograph affects what happens and also the prompt affects what happens. And so uh, you can experiment with some of those things uh, and doing different prompts with them. But that'll give you an idea of what you can do with taking a photo and using it to generate an AI image. I'm Dean, and this has been Photo Blue, and I'll see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like.